Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast of the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Katherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Christopher Van Kaufman. Today we're talking about the second Sunday of Easter. It's April 16th, 2023. And our text is Matthew 28, 16 through 20. This is the Great Commission. And in this text, we see uh, just as the promise was given to the women at the tomb, Jesus and the disciples have come back to Galilee, where it all started. And there on a mountain, they worship him, and Jesus makes a promise and a command to them. The command is to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is that Jesus is with them always, even to the end of the age. And this is the, again, we call this the Great Commission, it is the beginnings of what we see as the church as a missionary movement, which I think sometimes we can forget that. Yeah. The church started in, and when we talk about uh, Jerusalem and Galilee, we sometimes forget how tiny and how forgotten of a place it was in the Roman Empire. But it was from there that uh, the message of Jesus went out into all of the world. And in 2023, all of the world is uh, even more true than it was as that first missionary movement started. So, Certainly. So. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you something as a New Testament scholar, Christopher. Uh, the mountain uh, to which Jesus had directed them, there's several mountains in Matthew, right? I think maybe we've talked about this in an earlier podcast, but I can't remember. Yeah, so the interesting thing is that when we talk about mountains, there are several unspecified mountains in Matthew. So the Sermon on the Mount being the great example of this. We often see Jesus going up on mountains to pray by himself. So this is another place we get mountains. I think the only mountain that is specifically given a geographical location is the Mount of the Transfiguration. Mm. which we're told is outside of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's, it's kind of mountains in general are very important in Matthew as places of teaching. Mm. And I think that's what we're seeing right here is once again, that uh, Jesus has taken his disciples up on a mountaintop just on the Sermon on the Mount. And he even makes reference to this idea of making disciples, that is to, to teach the nations and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And so I think that's a, a, something that Matthew is referring us to think back on as the Great Commission goes out. So the Sermon on the Mount and then, yeah, the Great Commission, a, a, a reference to Jesus as a kind of Moses figure. Yeah, this is something is Dale Allison has pointed this out most convincingly, the idea that uh, Jesus functions as a new Moses, but also a greater than Moses. And there's that interplay between the two of them. Interesting, interesting. Well, the, the commission itself, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This, uh, the, the revelation, uh, the, um, the resurrection, the, the revelation of Jesus as uh, Messiah, as uh, Son of God, as, you know, and, and the, the resurrection, his uh, defeat of death, that cosmic event, leads to commissioning, leads to vocation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that the, the disciples, uh, both the women and the men here, uh, First the women and now the, the 11 disciples. Of course, Judas, Judas is not there anymore, having died. Uh, um, they're given the vocation to not, the vocation to share that good news, I'll put it positively. Not mm -hmm. to keep it to themselves, but to share that good news. And not just, as you said, not just in Galilee, not just in Jerusalem, but uh, to the whole world. And that's played a major role, uh, as you said, the, the church, how did you put it? The church as a missionary movement, uh, yep. mission movement, uh, has played a major role in the church's history for the last 2,000 years. You had mentioned before we uh, started recording uh, about the church that you go to. 
Yeah, so one of the things uh, is I think about this verse a lot because every Sunday, uh, my wife and I, when we go to Christ Lutheran Church, which is in Marine on St. Croix, Minnesota, which is one of the first town in Minnesota on the border with Wisconsin, it's an old Swedish Lutheran church. And up on the top, it has this last verse from uh, Matthew 28, uh, say, I am at the and the I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And so I think about this in, a lot. In Swedish. In Swedish, That was yes. Swedish, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think about this a lot in terms of the way in which uh, for so many of the people who left their home countries to come to the United States, this was the end of the world. And the comfort <laughs> that that, uh, that verse gave them as they went out into a new land and that this was something that they were called to bring with them and to share when they arrived. And so, you know, this church was founded in the 1840s, and that it was uh, something, you know, 1800 years after the Great Commission that was still a powerful force in their lives, a source of comfort, but also a source of energy and mission. You know, you were telling us before we started that and you've had personal experience of how this is still going yeah. 2000 yeah. and years later yeah yeah so i had the uh, the great privilege uh, and joy of uh, leading a group of luther seminary students to uh, amringa tanzania uh, mm-hmm. just a couple of months ago in january of 23 and uh, we, Aringa is uh, in kind of south central Tanzania, mid central uh, uh, Tanzania, uh, up in the mountains, actually, uh, speaking of mountains, beautiful, beautiful landscape. Um, and it's, uh, it's a town of a city, really, uh, of I think a million inhabitants. I think we were told it's, it's, it's good size, not as big as Dar es Salaam. Anyway, it's also the seat of uh, the, the, a Ringa Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania, the ELCT. And so uh, the reason we went was to uh, talk, to learn from them, to learn from our sisters and brothers in the global south, where the Christian church is exploding in growth, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. So um, the ELCT, for instance, is uh, um, has grown rapidly uh, to 8 million members now. Um, similarly, the, the Lutheran Church in Ethiopia, um, to the north of Tanzania, uh, is up to 10 million members. They've grown, they've almost doubled in size in the last 10 years uh, mm-hmm. or 11 years when um, my family and I lived in Ethiopia. It's uh, just a phenomenal growth. And so we were meeting with the ELCT pastors, the Tanzanian pastors, uh, and learning from them about evangelism. And for them, evangelism is just a way of life. And when we ask them, you know, why, <laughs> which seems like an obvious question, but I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, have the students hear uh, the reasons. Uh, they, they quoted the Great Commission as uh, the, the major motivating force for their sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They said, well, Jesus told us, right? Go there for and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them. Uh, And so they take this to heart. Now, uh, you know, I know that we could get off on a tangent here. I know that um, missionaries uh, have sometimes been the arm of colonialism uh, and imperialism, and there's some sad history there. And at the same time, um, that missionary movement has made Christianity a global uh, faith. Um, certainly now, you know, uh, centered in the global South. So two two thirds of the world's Christians live in the global South now. Uh, and I, I'll just say one more thing. But uh, as we um, we in the West sometimes shy away from the idea of missions, right? Uh, maybe even consider missionary a, a bad word. Um, I think we we have to get over that. Um, a, a book that we read in uh, on this trip, a book that I assigned, was by Laman Sana, uh, who is a um, African. I think he was from Gambia, a scholar of missions uh, who taught at Yale University. Uh, 
unfortunately passed away now. Uh, and he wrote a book called um, uh, Christianity. Uh, now I'm not going to remember it. Christianity Beyond. Oh, no, here it is. It's right on my desk. Whose Religion is Christianity? And the subtitle is The Gospel Beyond the West. And he uh, he talks about this kind of, he calls it the Christ, Christendom guilt complex. He said that many Western Christians have the Christendom guilt complex that uh, continually apologizes for missionary activity that is associated with colonialism. And he says, yes, it's it's good to, you know, understand that history and to apologize for the uh, the bad stuff that went on. But he said, you you really have to get over that guilt complex because see, the church is thriving in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, particularly, and in the global South uh, more generally. Uh, he said, you know, when you when you continue to have a guilt complex about that mission activity, you ignore the vitality and the uh, the you know the 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 life that is in uh, that has uh, that characterizes the church. Uh, in the global south, he said, "You, you know, you're you're discounting that. Uh, it's been a force for great good. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. hospitals and orphanages and schools. And so, I, I just want to say that I know that many of our listeners may, you know, feel some of that Christendom guilt complex, and for some good reasons, I think. But uh, I would just urge us to reconsider the centrality of the Great Commission for." The church that we are called to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, to announce His resurrection and His life uh, to uh, to those around us. No, yeah, no, I think that's so true. And I think one of the things that we see in reading the text of the Great Commission again that's important with regards to what you're talking about is to note that one of the difficulties is there is with the idea of this Christendom guilt complex, the idea that the churches of the West that sent missionaries somehow own Christianity yeah, and right. that they thereby imposed it. Uh, but Christianity takes on a life of its own and the power of Jesus takes on a life of its own. And in the Great Commission, when we read it, the idea, of course, is that the disciples are acting only insofar as they are telling about Jesus and telling about the authority that all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me, Jesus says, not has been given to you. And that the Great Commission is, a, is simply put, telling about Jesus and what Jesus, God has done in Jesus and what God will continue to do in Jesus. And so I think there's a, in revisiting the Great Commission, it's important to kind of get those uh, priorities straight in terms of what's going on there. That's a, that's a wonderful point. And I think, it, yeah, you you put it better than I did. And, and what this author, La Manzana, this scholar is saying, right? When you, put, when you delve too much into that kind of guilt complex, you are making a kind of claim that, that we're, that, yeah, that, Christian faith is ours, uh, the, the Church of the West, uh, then and and not um, Jesus, right? Not mm -hmm. it does not come from our own authority. It comes from the authority of Christ, uh, which is uh, what his question was, right? Well, whose religion is Christianity? Well, it's Christ. <laughs> yeah. Christ is the one who has the authority. Christ is the one who sends uh, and who yeah. who promises to be with us always to the end of the age. Yeah, and I think to wrap this up, one of the things we see, as we talked about in the Easter episode, is that this is the commissioning of imperfect disciples, of mm -hmm. disciples who abandon Jesus before his death. It is there, in some sense, their rehabilitation and their commissioning. And that the reality is, then and now, Jesus must always send imperfect disciples to fulfill this commission. And that is a, we could take that as a, something to be worried about or take it as a comfort as well, so. Amen.